Hey everybody, Kevin here from Humble Craftworks. Welcome to another episode of Woodworking with Mr. Kevin. So in today's episode, what we're going to do is we're going to build two very small uh, spice racks for this cabinet right here. So this cabinet sits over the top of a refrigerator from my client's kitchen. And she wanted a couple spice racks put in there and she sent me some photographs and said, I want something like this, but I want it out of wood. So today what we're going to do is we're going to build two little, two little spice racks. We've got uh, two pairs of these $8 full extension drawer glides. And we're going to use them a little differently than you normally would because we're going to lay them flat in here just like you see them here. And hopefully this works. I've never done this before. So we're going to see, we're going to see if it works together, I guess. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take some of this old Peruvian walnut I had laying around. We're going to use these as the bases. And we're going to take some more scrap I had laying around. This uh, curly maple and this curly piece of walnut. And we're going to make little rails and a little tiny miniature baluster to hold everything in place. And the only tool we're going to use today is the uh, table saw. Table saw and that's it. So if all you have is a table saw, you too can build this. So the best thing about woodworking and uh, the reason I got into it is because you can be very creative and do whatever the hell you want. You create your own style. Everybody's different. Uh, everybody mills differently. Everybody builds differently. And you can create your own little whatever um, in woodworking. And that's what I like about it the most. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is try to figure out what size looks the best because I think I'm going to use 3 8 by 3 8 little, little rails. And I'll show you this in a second. So it'll be in the sides all the way around all four edges. And then we're going to set this on top of the glides that are in here. And they have their own little base that they're sitting on and all that. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some scrap poplar and I'm going to mill it out and see what it looks like up against these two pieces of wood. There's always the right size, like the Goldilocks thing, you know, it's like, oh, this one's perfect. So you try three different sizes and see which one looks the best. And you go with that one, just like Goldilocks and the three bears. You find the one that works, um, but you do that before you go ahead and start cutting all the dados and everything in here because... Uh, Whatever I cut on here, I cut on the rails also. I'm gonna go mill a couple little pieces and we'll check it out. I'll see you in a minute. Look at that. I gotta stand back and look at it. Let me zoom this in real quick. I think the quarter inch might actually work. This is the quarter, 5 16 3 8 So the quarter and the 3 8 are easier to mill down and uh, half lap because uh, my blade's an eighth inch wide and it just makes it easier that way. So quarter or three eighths, I think the three eighths is too big. It's down to those two. And I think, man, it's gonna be super small. I don't know how strong that would be. A million small little tiny pieces like this is kind of a dangerous thing to do on a table saw, especially when they're little tiny two inch pieces. So I'm gonna show you uh, how I go about doing all this. Uh, what I plan on doing is just leaving a little bit stick out. So if it's quarter inch, we're gonna do three sixteenths yeah, so we'll do like a 3 16th dado. Set this in there. Plus, I want them to stick down a little bit too. I want them to stick down like an eighth of an inch. All right, I got to do some math. This is five inches here. Uh, my client wanted four and a quarter to the inside. That might just uh, tell us what, what we need right off the bat anyway. So part of the process is actually laying out your parts and figuring out what you need. So if you use these 5 16th pieces and we came to the inside, right? Boom, there. What we're gonna have to do is shrink this down a little bit. So we're gonna shrink this down to four and three quarters. Yeah, we're gonna go with five sixteenths. All right, all that for a five sixteenths. So now that I had a chance to look at it, I realized that I'm gonna have to take a quarter inch off this. So that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna rip these down to four and three quarters. We're gonna use the five sixteenths and we're going to, uh, we're just gonna dado out a little section here and uh, set this in. So a sixteenth of an inch is still sticking out the outside. So it'll kind of look cool. And it's only going up to uh, like inch and a half. And then we're gonna put a top rail on it like this. And a little bit of this is still gonna stick out the top. And then we'll have to glue that together. And hopefully the glue will make this strong enough where it won't break. Cause that's the biggest problem with uh, little pokey things sticking out. Um, so now I'm gonna lay everything out. We're gonna use this for the front. So everything gets two uh, rails in the front. All the sides are gonna be taken off of this guy here. So I'm gonna lay all this out. And once we have these two laid out, we're gonna have everything we need for uh, all sides. Uh, and then we're gonna do the fronts and the backs all the same way once we get this figured out. And uh, then we're gonna go from there. And we'll use the same dimensions, I think, for the little rails that go across the very top. So you're gonna have your, uh, you know, 5 sixteenths posts coming up like this. We're gonna have a rail across that. Uh, these cuts 
should be the same as this layout too because they're, they should be in the same exact spot and then we'll just cut them to size uh, once we get all that figured out. So this right here is the layout. We have the, uh, the bottom, the base is here and all of these little rails are up here and that's what we're gonna cut out. They're gonna be 5 16 uh, We're gonna do, uh, I think we're gonna do the first ones out of Poplar just to see how it works because uh, 5 16 is kind of a weird size because our, you know, our blade's uh, an eighth of an inch. 5 16 we gotta kinda get that lined up so it all works out. So I'm gonna lay all these out on these, uh, on the bases over here and then we'll flip you back on and I'll show you what I did. Well, I can tell you how I'm going to go about it. I'm going to go from, from this edge here, I'm going to come in an inch, and we're going to put a rail on both sides. And then we're going to put two more rails, and we're just going to split the difference, whatever that math comes out to be. All right, so here's the, here's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, raise this up so it's one tooth above. We have our push stick. We have a zero clearance fence in there. We're using a combination blade right now. Uh, I'm going to switch that over to a rip blade because I want a square tooth on here when we're cutting all these. But the first thing we're going to do is to... Uh, Try to get these little pieces here to 5 16 And instead of uh, you know using the actual wood and screwing that up, we're gonna screw up a hunk of poplar. Squeaker says that it takes a while. So Squeakers also says that uh, anytime you're joining any skinny boards, like smaller than a half inch, three quarters, uh, use a push stick. So if you're gonna use, if you're gonna join little boards like this, use a push stick like that. I have a skinny board jig video, it's over there somewhere. Uh, this is really important. This is how we're gonna mill everything today. The boards we're cutting out of are like this big, right? All we need is 14 inches. So we're gonna cut like maybe 16, you don't want to mill little tiny 5 16 square boards uh, just using your fingers. Use a push stick. Anything smaller than an inch, you should use a push stick. General rule. All right, there we go. I think what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to start milling up these pieces. We need like 70 inches, and all I have is this little scrap pieces here. Uh, something like 70 inches and 50 or 60 inches of this stuff here. Uh, these are the rails here, and this is the top cap part. Let's just start milling and see what happens. See what we get, and hopefully we have enough by the time it's all done. All right, so everything's milled, right? Yay. Uh, I'm gonna vacuum all this crap up now, and I'm gonna flip the blade from this combination blade to a, a square. Where the hell is it? So the scrap pieces we have, we're gonna try this guy. We're, we're gonna actually do all of our uh, datoing with this eighth inch rip blade. Uh, this thing's pretty damn good, it's pretty sharp. I just don't know about cross-cutting on this guy. <laughs> Little pieces like this. So we have those scrap pieces we're going to practice with. I'm going to wax this guy up right here. I'm going to wax the crack. If something's not feeling right in here. I uh, put some pocket screws in the back of this. Hopefully this is all three quarters of an inch. I think it is. It feels like it was. Will this be square? It says it's square. I'm gonna use the inch and a half screws and hopefully it doesn't come blowing out the face. Okay, so now that we pocket screwed this little guy on here, cutting these should be a little bit easier, right? Because we're just gonna hold it up here like this. We can actually clamp it in place if we want to, but I'm just gonna use my hands because uh, why else, you know? Yeah. Okay, magic button. Uh, hopefully it doesn't blow this out and uh, that's set to a quarter because we use the Wixie. And we'll see how it all goes. Here we go. All right, so the top will look good. The bottom, eh, not so much. So we're gonna move it over this way, almost an eighth of an inch. Almost, because I want it to have a clean cut. Go slower, maybe. Yeah, it's blown out the back. I'm shy of 3 16 Still blown out the back. Okay, so one and three sixteenths, just shy of the line is what we want. Yeah, this is the one we just did. So this one is better. You want it to get in there. 
I mean, it could fall out, but it, you want it. Squeaker says it needs to be snug. And that's pretty snug. Let's try another piece. Let's try this guy right here. And try the middle because, you know, that one kind of just slides right in easily. And that slides, boy, that's a stiff one right there. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna zoom you in. That's what the front looks like, okay? So the top, the back is gonna look like that. So it's gonna be a little blown out. Okay, so we're having a little bit of a blowout problem. Blowout. Danger. Pamper three, you got a blowout. Mm -hmm. Cause here's the conundrum. Yeah, when we cut it on this side and we shoot it through, right? This side will be clean. When we go to do this side, it'll be fine cause it'll be on the top. But any other ones that we do are not gonna be on the top. Let me explain you with like a, uh, with chalk. So cutting this way on this direction, it cuts cleanly, correct? This one over here, we'll flip it over, cut the face, it'll cut cleanly. But now what do we do? So we've cut this one good and we've cut that one good. So now we have to flip these over like this and we're now cutting the back, which is gonna blow out uh, this one and this one. So the only thing I could think to do and I'm gonna do right now, hopefully, I'm gonna loosen this fence up. I'm gonna shove it over. Hopefully you have zero clearance. And we'll just cut a piece over here somewhere. So we're gonna try that and see what happens. All right, here we go again. Let's give it a shot. We'll go nice and slow. Didn't blow out. There we go, uh, 330 seconds that way. Looks pretty good. One and three sixteenths. some random one here. Look at that. All right, both sides look good. Let's try this one. Just, uh, we're just gonna try it again. There it is. All right, so this, we know this works. I'm going to go ahead and zip all four of these, all the fronts and backs. I'm gonna lower the camera and zoom you in so you can actually see. She's really chatty today. So this miter gauge just came with my little tiny edge sander over there. Uh, <laughs> I got it basically free. I put a cherry fence on it and I put a little, uh, you saw me pocket screw this piece on top of it. It's not totally square this way, but it, it, it's a nice backer upper. Um, we have a full zero clearance fence now and that seemed to stop it from blowing apart. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna put the camera on the floor down there and I'm gonna zoom in so you can see this right here. All right, everybody, here we go. So uh, we're gonna do all of these now. I'm gonna do every single one before I move uh, the fence. Uh, that way they're all exactly the same. And if I screw them up, they're all the same. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna start at one inch and we're gonna work our way to one and three sixteenths. I'm gonna hold it a little shy at one and three sixteenths, check it, and then once I get it right, I'm gonna do the final cut on all of them, uh, just like that. Magic button. <laughs> These two are done. All right, so we're gonna put these in. They're gonna stick out just a little bit like that. We're gonna put a little eased edge on that side so it'll look cool. And at the bottom, we'll probably hold it to, I don't know, about an eighth of an inch or so. Yeah, squeaker says like an eighth of an inch. So that's what we're gonna do, uh, something like that. So that part's done. Now we gotta do the sides. And we can do the one inch on the sides the exact same way. All right, so we're gonna continue leaving this just where it is. And we're gonna do uh, these ones right here on all four sides. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna work our way backwards. Uh, we're not gonna touch the fence. We're just gonna start at one and three sixteenths and work our way to one inch. So Peruvian walnut is very, very chippy. I don't mean trippy, I mean chippy. Piece right out here, chunked off. I have no idea where it went. I didn't see it fly. I didn't do, see anything. So hopefully uh, we can flip this over and use the other side. Okay, so now we gotta figure out these two right here. All right, it's starting to look like, Squeaker says it looks pretty cool. See how that is? That looks pretty good, right? Three and seven eighths. <laughs> Let's see. 
That's what it says anyway. Oh my God, look at this. Look, I found that piece. Here's the piece that goes on one of these ends here. I found it. I'm pretty sure it's got to be this one. There it is. Yep, that's it. Look at that. I found it. So I'm going to put this inside the cabinet until we get done. Then I'm going to glue it back on. Holy cow, that's amazing. All right, that made me feel better. Well, wow, that's cool because that's a pretty significant chunk that's missing. All right, three and seven eighths. There you go. I get sidetracked easy. I'm sorry. What am I at? Two and seven eighths? Communication failure. Where is this thing? Oh, is it four and seven eighths? Oh, four and seven eighths. Don't. Okay, dummy. Eyesight, baby. Eyesight. We're going to go with four and 13. That looks better. Yeah, four and 13 it is. Okay, so four and 13 sixteenths. And then we're going to go that way. So we're going to start. We're going to start on this one. We're going to do cut them all. And they all go the same way, right? Because we're going to go this way with the fence. Flip this over. Yep, all go the same way. Okay. Here we go again. There they are. Okay. I'm going to back you out now. Hold on a second. So here's the drawing of the little rails, right? Uh, these are two and a half inches. The top sits up about, I don't know if we should do a quarter or an eighth. Let's see. Yeah, that, that looks pretty good. How far is that? Hold on, I want to just check something out. This is part of the uh, design process right here. Oh my All right, so I just marked a quarter inch on there because I want to see what it looks like when it sticks up a quarter of an inch. That's not bad. So if it sticks up, it'll stick down a quarter and that would be cool. And we got plenty of room. For the drawer glides, right? All right, so I conferred with the drawer glides and they say that the, the back ones have to be flush with the bottom, but all the rest can be hanging down a quarter of an inch. So that is very cool. Doing more design here. This is how I design things. I start thinking about stuff and like, well, will that look any good? No. And I want an equal distance from the corner. We can see what I'm doing there. Because these are both one inch from the corner. So if we held it back a little bit, this is how you go about designing things. Really? You could draw it out and then change your mind a bunch or just do it on the fly like I'm doing here and look like an idiot. Durr. Yeah, I think we're going to go a half inch from either end. Kind of like those two are. So it'll be kind of close in the middle, but it won't be. And it'll be not touching, but it won't. And it will be, and it might be. What? But then we'll round the ends over and make them all pretty. Ooh. And then hopefully this all holds together and doesn't fall apart. That's the whole gizmo right there. Will it or won't it? Yeah, we'll find out. Stay tuned. You hear that? The world's coming to an end. Why is it that every time you turn on the damn camera, Jimmy Helicopter Man wants to fly over? Or the neighbor's dog starts to bark. See? <laughs> it's, uh, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So, uh, yeah, so in this, that, and the other thing, and whatnot, and hellfire. Ugh. All right, today's little episode, we're going to go over how to ding up all your crap. Uh, can't get the damn thing to stand up. I know, it's confusing, huh? All right, I'll start over.